Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Daniel. At that time, Michael the great prince, the protector of the people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to, be God. to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 132. We'll read responsively by whole verse. Lord, remember David and all the hardship he endured. How he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. Until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it when it was at the tent of meeting, sounded in the fields of Jericho. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and be a resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant Jacob's sake, do not turn away from the gate of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon their throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her, her provision, and satisfy her poor with joy. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David play. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but as for him, his crown will shine. Uh, 
Uh, second reading is from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you speak this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as, but as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. My little friends, my somewhat bigger friends, some I see in the back and the front, I have Jaime who would like to take you all to chapel if you would make your way, all right? There we go. I saw some heads perk up. It's been a while since they've been to Children's Chapel. All right. Come on, come on. Thank you, Mr. Jaime. Cora, Lilla, Hannah, there you go. Thank you. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. I need to put a footnote every time I hear this gospel read or something oftentimes from the gospel of John because it uses the phrase the Jews throughout the gospel over and over and over again. And I am remiss as a preacher if I don't acknowledge up front uh, that uh, this has been a... a uh, often misinterpreted, misapplied, uh, anti-Semitic uh, um, reason for anti-Semitic justification in terms of those of uh, Jewish faith for centuries. And that's not how it was intended, if you understand the bigger piece of John's gospel. Um, what was being, uh, 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 Jesus was speaking to and his frustration throughout that gospel often were the religious authority which is very different than the Jews and is a, a larger sort of the whole population. So I just want to put that there and mark it right now. Uh, I, and any time I hear that gospel and the way it was presented this morning in particular, I feel the need to say that and to remind myself and those present that, that there is a difference between the use of the term the Jews 
and religious authority. Uh, so just bring that to your mind and note that there. So with that said, that's a bit of a footnote, um, but uh, that I, it's important. So um, with that said, I'm counting on you all to know a pretty iconic movie um, by the title it's been out for, I don't know, probably 25 years or so. Uh, the name of it is A Few Good Men. It won a lot of uh, awards. Uh, and if you need a quick refresher, it has Tom Cruise, of course, back in his early days. And then also Jack Nicholson, who is a phenomenal actor. Uh, it, he's one of my favorites to watch, quite honestly. And there's an iconic scene at the end of that movie. Those of you who are familiar with this movie, uh, even if you're not, you will have heard it as a cultural reference uh, in our world today. Um, and it, the, we find ourselves in the middle of a court. And uh, Jack Nicholson, who is Colonel Jessup, is being cross-examined by one of the JAG attorneys because there has been a death that has happened down at a base in Guantanamo Bay that this uh, Jack Nicholson's character, Colonel Jessup, is in charge of. And he was the base command over that uh, particular base. And one of the soldiers, the trainees, died. Uh, and so they're, they're uh, bringing to trial the two men that, that are accused of this and it's a pretty heated situation. And so as only Jack Nicholson does and can bring this to life, you know, Jack Nicholson is going back and forth with, with Tom Cruise and his character. And uh, they go on and on and back and forth and back and forth. And, and Cruise is sort of like pulling and drawing Jack Nicholson, Colonel Jessup into this place that he really does want to reveal uh, what his, view is of how he trains and, and, and the role as colonel he takes in keeping America safe. Uh, and it's, it, it's um, come under question whether that was legal or not for him to order what is a code red in that movie. And Colonel Jessup believes, although he doesn't really want to say at, at the very beginning, they sort of skirt around it, eventually this back and forth in the courtroom goes back and forth and back and forth. And that iconic line that we know so much where uh, uh, Jack Nicholson says, you can't handle the truth. And there's just silence. And it's like Nicholson has just been wanting to say this. He's been wanting, how dare you people question my role and what I do in order to keep this country safe. You're not ready for it. You can't handle it. It's the underbelly, I think, in many, many ways. But Colonel Jessup understands in his mind that it's a part of his role. And it's a part of his role as how he equips and trains military personnel coming out. And it's a line that stuck with me for many, many reasons. You've seen the movie and, and the uh, acting that goes with it is superb. But it's this idea of you can't handle the truth. So that was a line that can't, kept coming back to me throughout this week as I prayed with and sat with these scriptures. This idea of the truth. Because we're hearing Jesus talk about what the truth is and that he came to testify to the truth in the gospel today. Now, it is a very different kind of truth, right? Very, very different kind of truth. But I, I found myself after reading Jesus, after reading this account, account of the uh, conversation, I kept wondering, though, this truth that Jesus is trying to say in so many different ways over and over throughout his life, and yet he kind of keeps running into a brick wall, I feel like. And here he is finding himself on trial. And that idea of me, can I handle the truth that Jesus is trying to tell me? Am I ready for it? Not in the way that Jack Nicholson was saying, you can't handle the truth. But yet there's, there's something underneath that that just sort of sat with me. Here is Jesus over and over, and he's doing it again with Pilate. Pilate is going back and forth and back and forth, and it's almost as if Pilate is trapped, in a sense, because there's some underlying piece there that I believe, and we can look later in Scripture in this Gospel, where Pilate kind of knows. He has an inkling of what's going on, and he's, he's, he's kind of taking a hands-off approach. He's saying, 
you know, your people brought you here. I, I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not, you know, he, it's like he, he doesn't want to answer the, the question Jesus is putting back to him because he knows in some sense, deep down underneath, if he pays attention to what's going on in his heart and in his mind, he kind of knows the truth of what Jesus is bringing and who he is and what's really going on. But he can't take it in. Pilate is, in a sense, he's trapped in his role. Because if he were to acknowledge who Jesus really is and what he's really about, he's lost all control that he has. And as the person, as the ruler in the outpost, uh, in an outpost, a Roman outpost, he has to maintain control. And so he, he just kind of skirts around, if you read between the lines, I, I believe, the truth of what Jesus is offering him and trying, has been trying to show the religious authority and all those he's come in contact with during his ministry these past three years. Jesus is not the only one who's trying to reveal a truth to the people that he loves and is serving and is, is trying to kind of move to a new understanding of who God is. We heard it in our readings from last Sunday and then this Sunday, the beginning of Samuel and the end of Samuel. The beginning of Samuel last Sunday was this glorious start to the monarchy coming from the prophets and the judges. And then this Sunday, we heard the end of Samuel, which is about David and celebrating King David, this wonderful monarch who has done all these amazing things, who yet also is human. And it's almost as if, you know, we celebrate the beginning, although there's some reticence and hesitation with, the, um, with, with God's mm, reluctance, maybe, to allowing a monarch system to be put in place in Israel. Because if you remember, God isn't really thrilled when he's speaking through the judges and the prophets to appoint a monarch. They push and push and push, and the Israelites push and push and push. And finally, God's like, okay, I'll, I'll give, you know, we'll do this. If this is what you want, it's not what I recommend, but okay. And so they get one. And it's a glorious start, and then we get through to this wonderful king. And at the end of our reading today from 1 Samuel, it's almost as if there's a celebration of who King David is, but also a reminder of how it can be abused and misused. And it's almost as if God is saying, be careful. Really what I want is your heart. I'll let you have a king because this is what you think you need. But please pay attention to the truth that I have been telling you. All I really want is your heart. And I want you to love me, I want you to love yourself, and I want you to love your neighbors. That's really all it is. And so Jesus, who he's speaking to, again, in Herod, Herod's not really wanting to acknowledge what he senses. Jesus has been trying to talk about who the truth is, who he is, hearing his truth to all those who are following him, who are listening to him. In the same way that God has been talking to the Israelites and those, his people all the way through the centuries. And Jesus is doing it again in yet another way. Are they ready to handle and hear the truth? That God wants our hearts, our minds, our souls, and wants us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so we find ourselves on this Sunday, Christ the King Sunday. Again, another theme of a monarch and a reign, right? The end of our liturgical year before we turn or sort of make the other part of the circle into Advent and start going back around uh, through these seasons. Again, we end with the reign of Christ or Christ the King and this idea of a monarch and being ruled through the monarch, but a gracious monarch. And those themes show up through scripture. And they are they show up in our, in our conversation with Pilate that we heard this morning. But there's, there's a bit of an edge that I'd like to explore, and it goes back to this idea of can we handle the truth? 
the truth of what Jesus is really calling us to and how Jesus is really calling us to love. And I found myself sitting with this as I uh, re uh, read a post by a colleague of mine this week um, that was shared. And I'd like to share it with you now because um, I think it's, it's an appropriate question to ask ourselves, are we ready for where the church is taking us in this sort of post-Christian century that we find ourselves in? You know, you've heard me talk about it before. Phyllis Tickle, uh, a, a very preeminent um, church historian, says that the church goes through a garage sale every 500 years or so. Well, the Reformation was about 500 years ago. We're sort of due, and we've already started to turn and embark on that. And it's one of those times where we can really, I think, rather than sit in fear and, and um trying to sort of avoid it, but to sort of step into it like we've begun to step into here at St. Andrews and really ask some challenging, hard questions. And I hear, in a sense, an echo of Jesus' invitation to truth. And are we ready to handle the truth that Jesus is trying to tell us yet again through the scriptures that we have this morning? And so this was my colleague's take on where the church could be going and perhaps it left me wondering, wow, am I really ready to embrace that? And what does it look like to embrace it? My colleague writes, we, meaning the church as a whole, are not a people called to build buildings and hire priests so we can baptize Mary and Barry until Jesus comes home. Jesus has come and has given us the Holy Spirit and expects great things. Greatness is measured by the degree we consider others to be better than ourselves. We don't serve Christ by asking folks to join us. We serve Christ, could it be that we serve Christ by going out and joining others who are willing to work for justice, freedom, and peace, to love our neighbors around us deeply as we love ourselves. And he finishes by saying, we are not a kingdom. God, that was one that was a hard one, given Christ the King and all that it has meant for us throughout church these past several centuries. We are not a kingdom or a reign, but a movement. Let's get going. As I sat with that and thought about, let's get going, we're not a kingdom, we're a movement. Is there some truth there? Is Jesus calling us yet again to become something different, something more ourselves? And as we, as the church, are we ready to embrace that and to get out there and figure out what it could be like? Can we handle it? And are we ready? Can I handle it? And am I ready? And I think that's the wrong question to ask. I think the question is, we can handle it, not I, but we together. We are and we will, and we will with God's help. Go out and serve the people that we find and look for the Christ in them and allow them to see the Christ in us. Amen. Please join me as we reaffirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. It is spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, especially President Joe Biden, Governor Kevin Stitt, and Mayor Stan Booker. For all who are protected, free, and at peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For those who are in any danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially Al, the Alexander family, Anita, the Beatty family, Blake W., Bob, Caroline, Charlie, Damien, Ed, Felicitas, Fred, the Hamlin family, JD, Jean, Jerry, Jim C., Joe, John L., June, Catherine, Lucille, Mary R., the Matz family, Mrs. Stahl, Pat D., Richard, Sandra, Sharon, Sharon H., Sherry, Stephanie B., Steve D., Tracy M., and the Williams family. For those who have been sick, by and peace. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Paulson Reed, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, especially the Diocesan Center and staff. For all who serve God and serve church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially birthdays for Joe Kood, Yvonne Todd, and anniversary for Bob and Jean Harbison. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Margaret Brown, Pat Brown's daughter-in-law, and Dr. Jennifer Head, the eye doctor next door to our church. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sin. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, 
known and unknown. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> God's peace. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Please be seated. Please be seated. Um, welcome, everyone. You are, uh, it's wonderful to see you all this morning. Uh, um, two, two quick announcements. Uh, it is in Gathering Sunday, so if you have a pledge card, uh, I believe we're actually passing uh, the plates today, which is a new thing. Po uh, um, I keep wanting to say post-COVID, we're not post-COVID, but we are all vaccinated if we want to be vaccinated and that allows us to do some things a little bit differently. And so here we find ourselves. Uh, so the, the plates will be passed um, and um, we'll be blessing our uh, pledge cards for the 2022 year if you uh, would like to put one in. There's a couple of spares in the back as well. Uh, but just know that that in particular will be offering a blessing for. And then the second thing is we have a uh, Tuesday from 1210 to 1250 uh, is uh, lectionary Bible study. So we'll be meeting here in the parish hall uh, and we'll be looking at scriptures for the upcoming week, which believe it or not is Advent one. So it's designed so that's 50 minutes just during a lunch break, uh, bring a snack uh, sack lunch and uh, stop by and you can buzz in and, and buzz out if you are working. Um, and I think you'll find uh, worship on Sunday uh, a little, little more I deeply enriched having looked at the lessons ahead of time if you don't do that already. Um, I believe that's everything that I need to announce. Uh, it's just wonderful to be with you all this morning. If you um, uh, would like to receive communion today, uh, we have bread, we have one kind. Next week we will be back to bread and wine, so another one of those pieces we're adding back in um, uh, here in the near future. Uh, if you'd like to receive a blessing and not the bread, just simply come up and cross your arms like this and I'll know to give you a blessing. Um, all are welcome. Thank you. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. Please rise.
We give thanks for the generous gifts and all the ways that we show our signs and commitment to you, O oh God, ruler of all. Um, bless these gifts, these pledges, and all the work that they allow us to do as we serve you in your world. Amen. One of my favorite prayers to pray uh, is a prayer of self-dedication, and I feel like today, is on In Gathering Sunday, is, is one of those days. It's uh, to remind ourselves um, and to invite God uh, to help us dedicate ourselves individually and as a larger group of people. So I'll pray that as well. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, and so control our wills that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so with the morning, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us 
and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life Christ our Savior. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.